Federico. He is a R&D director of Smalma Tech since uh, 2015. His background is chemistry and a PhD in material science. His main expertise is related to development and production of nanostructured materials and implementation of uh, encapsulation methodologies for product development. He is uh, currently in charge of uh, Smalma Tech's national and international R&D project. So please, Federico, go ahead when you want. So uh, thank you for, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, it's a delicate situation for me after such a, a great uh, panel of, of speakers to, to be here for me. So uh, Small Matech is a, a small company. We are an SME created in 2010, uh, but only after 2014, the company becomes graduated so we, we we were a startup and now we are uh, a grown up something like that so we are uh, an SME that uh, we are trying to to introduce our uh, additives the additives that we developed in the market i will try to to explain a bit uh, our history so the idea of um, of this presentation is to to show a new additive based on layered double hydroxides, which can be useful to increase uh, the durability, which now it's a, an odd topic, uh, durability of concrete. Uh, there is always higher demands to increase the performance of concrete. So we believe that um, the introduction of this additive can be a possible solution or uh, a preventive solution in order to increase the, the lifetime of concrete structures. If we consider the um, normal uh, performance of an high performance concrete with time, normally it has this behavior, but then with time we start to have some problems associated to its durability, which can be related to carbonation, uh, chlorizing diffusion, and these phenomena will lead to the beginning of corrosion. So what we are proposing is to, or due to the incorporation of the additive that we are developing and producing, which is L1 clay named uh, LDH, uh, we are trying to suppress or delaying these three phenomena in order to increase the durability of concrete. And the idea is to using a single additive, we can limit the diffusion of chlorides, limit the carbonation, and in parallel to these two processes, we can release corrosion inhibitors when it is necessary, not from the beginning. So the first point is to uh, introduce you to what are the LDHs. So we are talking about um, a structure, uh, a lamellar structure which is composed by uh, metallic hydroxides which forms these uh, layers and in between these layers we can intercalate specific molecules uh, these type of clays are synthetic we synthesize them from bottom to top and we can play chemically uh, between these layers. So we can introduce different kinds of compounds since small molecules to large molecules as proteins. But let's focus on <coughs> on inorganic uh, compounds. So our idea he here is to really introduce corrosion inhibitors that are commercial, commercial available, but we will give them a new release profile basically. But we are not talking ab only about a corrosion inhibitor because this is only what we introduce here. The material it itself, it has other uh, properties. So due to their uh, morphology and geometry, uh, it can really enhance the barrier properties of uh, the barrier properties and the mechanical properties of, th of the matrices where these materials are incorporated. Due to their chemical composition, it can act as a buffer, neutralizing some uh, corrosion reactions and as I mentioned before it can really capture and entrap uh, aggressive species in this specific case we are talking about chlorides and carbonates and in parallel to this reaction uh, I I these materials are able to release corrosion inhibitors that we previously immobilized 
in these galleries. So basically now I will try to explain how these uh, clays, let's call them like this, how these clays work. So here we have a, a very simple uh, scheme, scheme of um, uh, concrete with um, the steel rebar, some aggregates, cement, sand, and many other things where we also introduce our clay. So our LDH is loaded with the corrosion inhibitor. Of course, that if the concrete is perfect, if no cracks appear, no pores appears, it doesn't mean there is no need to include this kind of additives. But in reality, we know that with time, for sure, cracks will appear, pores will appear, and this will be the preferential ways for intro, um, ingress of chlorides or carbonates. And when it happens, we will have an internal pH drop, which will lead to the um, loose of passivation of steel rebar. We will have the corrosion attack, and of course, the corrosion will start. Um, <coughs> uh, what what these type of materials will, how they will behave when this happens. So basically, with the, the, the diffusion of chlorides and with the presence of water, uh, these uh, clays have the ability to exchange anions. So immediately they will stop, st start to entrap chlorides, immobilize them in these um, galleries, and at the same time will release the compounds that we have immo immo immobilized before. So with, with time, we will be able to entrap uh, chlorides, carbonates, and we will be able to release the corrosion inhibitor that was previ previously immobilized, being able to create a new passivation layer on the steel rebar and decreasing the corrosion rate of, of, the, of the structure. So this way we really believe that it's a, a, an interesting way to increase the durability of concrete structures focus, focusing on these three possible processes. Of course, that there are many other processes that uh, LDHs are, are not able to solve, but if we can solve diffusion of chlorides, carbonation and corrosion, it's already something significant. So from um, some from some preliminary tests that was done in uh, in solutions, we we were able to see that these type of materials were really able to capture chlorides, able to capture um, carbonates, the release and the presence of corrosion inhibitor inside this uh, additive. It's able to release up to fifty percent of the corrosion rate. Of course, that. Uh, these materials were designed to to be used in a range of p a normal range of pH, but uh, we know that in concrete some pHs can reach uh, values higher than 13, and there are some doubts about the stability or instability of these materials at uh, these conditions. Uh, but we believe that in some preliminary results show that this stability or instability really depends on the particle size and which is directly correlated to the surface area and the activity of this or the activity or reactivity of these particles and their surface area and of course that if we raise if we raise a lot the pH and talking about um, a clay with the anionic exchange ability we will have some kind of competitions between chlorides and hydroxides. But it doesn't mean that it's a, a negative effect because even if we release the corrosion inhibitor before it's expected, we are entrapping um, hydroxides that later can be released, helping the repassivation of steel. So if we increase again the internal pH of concrete, we can be able to repassivating the steel rebar. Moving to tests in concrete, something that is still ongoing in the frame of the project that is supporting this event. Um, it was possible to see that in some cases when we are using 
very fine particles. Um, there are some dissolution of these particles, and since these particles is com are composed by zinc and aluminum hydroxides, the small amount of uh, zinc that it's released affects uh, negatively the curing kinetics of uh, concrete, which is a quite complex system as was uh, shown before, and we really need to to understand how this very low amount of zinc that is released due to the dissolution of the particles affects um, these, these kinetics. On the other side, when we use coarse or larger particles, we see that this effect is not visible. So if, if we decrease the surface area of these particles, in principle, we are limiting its reactivity and the dissolution is also limited. So uh, the amount of zinc is uh, almost uh, zero and there is no significant in, in impact in the um, curing kinetics of concrete. Uh, and in, in this case, we also saw that there, are, uh, there is a positive effect in the limitation of chloride's diffusion because the, the values that we, we saw in comparing to the um, reference are really promising. Nevertheless, uh, and, and to guarantee that um, even if there is some dissolution of the particles, we don't want to have uh, zinc in the composition of these uh, particles. So we are now focus our uh, developments to synthesize calcium aluminum LDHs. Also with introduction of the corrosion inhibitor in order to keep all the properties for, for this type of materials, but um, without the zinc in order to guarantee that no um, influence on the curing parameters will be uh, affected. And of course, that um, this is something uh, quite recent, and we need to, to invest more time and money to really understand um, the performance of this type of additives and how they will behave, and not only in mortars but also after the in, in concrete after the, the, the curing. Uh, regarding to the market perspectives, from our point of view. Uh, we are dealing with a very competitive market when the price of raw materials are quite relevant from one side, but from the other side we are talking about um, an increase in terms of durability, so the public admi administration is always asking for higher service life, longer uh, duration periods, keeping the, um, the same properties, and it can be a uh, an interesting market for us. Uh, we really believe that the introduction of this type of uh, additives, combining these different functionalities can be an add-on to, to increase the durability of concrete. Uh, and although this is something uh, attractive, uh, we need to, to establish um, uh, synergies with um, concrete producers, uh, cement producers, something that we are doing in the frame of this project. Uh, but we feel that sometimes we need to go deeper to really understand uh, how this behaves because, okay, everybody has some uh, limited time and sometimes the results are not so clear as we want, uh, but uh, definitely we need to, to invest more time and money to to, to really understand how this how this works in concrete. Nevertheless, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, this type of additives will be placed in the market for pro pro uh, protective purposes, being directly introduced in concrete admixtures or uh, in coatings. Uh, now, talking about uh, a bit uh, about the small tech history, so we start uh, with the production of these additives in a lab scale, so four years ago we are we were producing five seven grams <laughs> of additive per batch. Then we did the first scale up for a reactor with ten liters capacity, where we were able to have two hundred grams of additives, 
and now we, we have this reactor with 500 liters where we are able to produce 15 kilograms per, per day. So basically in the end of uh, one year we are able to produce around 5 to 10 tons of these additives. And currently we, we are working to, to increase our production site in order to decrease the price of these additives because we know that it's quite important parameter if we want to introduce it in, in the market. Uh, so the idea is passes through a new scale-up step or by licensing this technology to an industrial producer. And uh, in the last year, uh, in the frame of uh, an SME instrument, which is a, a typology of projects from European Commission dedicated to SMEs, we got the CLF of excellence and we got the phase one of this instrument. So it ended last month. So now we are preparing uh, the application for the second phase where the investment can go uh, up to 2.5 million of euros where we will dedicate uh, this investment to control uh, quality control of the production for perform deeper studies focus on characterization of all the steps not only from the production part but also in the application part and here we are not talking about only concrete but also in for other fields and also in terms we will invest for registration following reach because it's a quite important thing and for um, depending on the level of production that we will reach that we will get uh, the reach re regulation it will be also different and the, the demand will be also different but we are now focused uh, on these steps or actions. Uh, to conclude, so basically uh, the introduction of a new additive uh, as a preventive action may increase the durability of concrete uh, constructions and these LDAGs based additives are uh, in the testing or validation phase with some promising results. Nevertheless, we really need to to do deeper studies in order to understand how these additives act when they are incorporated in concrete. In solution, it's quite easy to study them, but uh, as you know much better than me, concrete is a very dynamic system, and to really understand all the reactions that happen during the um, drying step is quite demanding and it's something that we want to learn a bit more in order to adjust the composition and the properties of our additives in order to be able to, to fulfill um, yeah, the properties that they need to, to have. And we really believe that uh, the introduction of Ad Prime, which is the brand of additives that we are developing, will be in the market soon. That's all from our side. So basically, small matech is trying to provide small solutions for big problems. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Federico. I don't know how the timing is. It's good enough for some questions. <laughs>